What's up, everybody? Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Yeah, and welcome to the premiere webisode of 10 Minutes with Teddy and Tina. A discussion of life, love, family, and faith. Yeah. Today, we're going to be beginning a four-part discussion on the two becoming one. Mm -hmm. But the first part will be about um, back to being single. Now, how, how are we going to talk about back to being single? With the two, I know how do two become one, and then we then we went to single. Yeah. Doesn't really make sense right now, but it will make <laughs> sense in about ten minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. <laughs> Listen, this is what being single is all about. You have to have a relationship with the Lord first. You have to be single and whole in your relationship with yeah. God. You have to be happy with who you are, happy with who He made you, know your identity, and bring that into a relationship. Because two half people coming together is going to make one broke relationship. Yeah, it is. And that's what many of us do. That's what we did. We come together and, you know, you start off, everybody's looking good and seem to have all the right things going on. Got the right career, yeah. you know, got the right life, got the right money, got the right personality, whatever, you know, body banging, whatever, you know, you're into, you're into these people. And so, you know, a man is pursuing a woman, woman pursuing a man. Somebody says, let's get married. And you say, oh, I love this. Let's do it. You get married, you know. <laughs> well, you that dating phase can be tricky too you gotta you gotta be careful how you go into a relationship our yeah. relationship started off wrong so it ended wrong our relationship started off with us well, having, it didn't end wrong well it, 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 it almost tried to well end it's wrong. not it's not the end but there was a restart yeah so the end before our restart was it was wrong. bad it, it was, it, bad. It was, it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> but we entered into the relationship wrong we went into a relationship having sex yeah. you got to be careful how you go into a relationship that's not being single and whole in your relationship with the lord it really just made it really hard for us to actually figure out how we we're going to do our healing. We, we, we kind of went back to what we started with to try to heal our relationship. Which is bad. sex, 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 sex. Yeah, yeah. And it becomes a coping me uh, mechanism. It becomes a cover up. It comes a way to um, evade or avoid dealing with the underlying issues. You just do whatever it takes to make yourself feel good. And I don't really have to face myself right. and deal with myself. But the truth is, um, you know, we got married, we come into the relationship, we're all happy and we think it's for love. But I didn't realize that I had a whole bunch of daddy issues when we came into the relationship. All of my issues with my relationship with my father, mm -hmm. I was expecting him to be what I didn't have in my dad or him to fulfill, you know, those areas that seem unfulfilled as it pertained to my relationship with my <laughs> father. I got to stop you right there. What? Because I just thought about why I, I entered into the marriage. I thought that I was going to marry up. You know, you marry somebody who's awesome, who's amazing, who's gorgeous, who's smart and all this, and they make you better. You know what I mean? You marry above yourself, basically. And so I put too much pressure on my wife. I married my wife hoping that she would change me. I would stop cheating. I stopped being a, a ladies' man. I settled down because I got married. So basically, I made a god out of my so you thought I was going to solve all them problems that you that you had? Well, wow, that was the perspective I had. You had a total perspective. And what he realized <laughs> that I could be a good wife, but I couldn't be a good God. Horrible God. So I couldn't deliver him <laughs> from his issues. Neither could he deliver me. And because we never got full deliverance, we still had those underlying issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when life started happening, more children, you know, careers, busyness, in-laws, outlaws, this, <laughs> that, you know, life happens and your life gets full and everything is not great. Then yeah. these underlying issues that you never de dealt with, they start to resurface. And you're yeah. trying to fix it all with sex, but sex, you know, after it, when it's new, everything is good. But when it gets, you know, when you didn't had it and you're comfortable and you, you know what it is, it's not solving all the problems like it used to. And it's, it's an escape, but it's not a solution. So we had to go back to where did we go wrong? Yeah. So we, you know, when our relationship basically went to hell in a handbag, we had what, to, what do we do, baby? We, we, we had to go back to being single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to go back to what did we do? We, this ain't working together, God. Yeah. And I would have loved to, and I actually tried to take his sins to God. I tried to take God, him to God for God to fix him, but I don't have the authorization to fix him. Yeah. I have authority over me, so I can take me to God. I can pray for him, but I had to take 
me to God. Right, right. Because if he would have got all fixed and perfect and everything, you know what I mean? Then, and I'm still broke, then we still got a jacked up relationship because yeah. two broken people make a broke down relationship. So, so basically you have to go to God on your own. You have to go to God in prayer in studying the word and seeking him and receiving his love. You have to go to God individually on your own behalf mm -hmm. because in order to have a complete relationship, a relationship that God ordained, you have to get the information from the creator of the institution. And God's way is better than anybody else's way, especially in a relationship that was by, for, and about him. Absolutely. And I have a scripture that I want to share with y'all about that. Uh, this scripture is in Colossians uh, 2, 9, and 10 in the New Living Translation. I want to read this for you guys because it'll help you understand your complete wholeness in God. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is head over every ruler and authority. So I guess that means you will not be complete. Uh, you, your mate won't be complete in you. No. You ain't complete in them because no. you're complete in Christ. Yeah. And when we try to find completion in our mates, we are making a God out of our mates. Mm -hmm. And the reason why relationships fail is because our mates make good mates. They make horrible gods. Mm -hmm. And so our expectation is based on what are you doing for me? How are you fulfilling me? And that's when I'm going to be happy when you've made all those marks. And so it's it's unfair and it's unhealthy. So when we come back to God and we realize that our identity is based on who made us and who cre created us and how they did a complete and entire job, we began to pray. We began to seek him on our knees. We began to seek him in prayer and he begins to pour his love out on us and show us who he made us to be and show right. us how we can compliment a mate, but we don't need a mate to make us because we've already been made. See, our relationship, our marriage is, is supposed to shine. It's supposed to bring glory to God. It's an institution that he created. It's a way that we experience his kind of love. It's the way that two people experience a genuine God-like kind of love. So the union itself shines. Yeah. The two people that we bring into the union is supposed to already be whole and complete. And then when we get into the union, it shines because we are complete in him. So therefore, he shines. And it's shining based on an unconditional love, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This union is reflecting the union of God to the body of Christ, uh, 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 the body of Christ, which is the church. Right. And so if this is reflecting that union and we've been given Jesus Christ because of unconditional love, then if we have a union that reflects that one, then this has to be based in unconditional love. And the problem is all of our love is very, very, very conditional. Mm. So we have to go back to the unconditional lover and get an understanding and, and, and we need to be endowed with this unconditional love. We need to have an understanding of it and a revelation of it and commune with God enough to be filled with it so that we can give it away. So that when we are coming to love on our spouses and commune with our spouse, we're doing what we do out of an overflow of what has come from God, not a condition of what they did to earn it. Because we didn't earn the love that we've been given. We didn't even, we didn't do anything to come up with this union. God gave it to us as a gift. And we do it, we do it to glorify God. We love each other with God's kind of love to actually glorify him. Baby, read that scripture that talks about um, doing it as unto the Lord. That's right. That's right. This is uh, Colossians 3, uh, 23 through 24 in the Amplified uh, Bible. It says, whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul. That is, put in your very best effort mm. as something done for the Lord and not for men, mm. knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that you will receive the inheritance, which, which is your greatest reward. Mm. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. So you don't serve your mate because they've been good to mm. you. You serve your mate because God has been good to you and God has, this is God's command to us. And we don't just do it because I, you know, I want to meet, meet all the rules so I don't make you mad. Out of the un understanding of God's great love and God's great commitment to us and First. his power and spirit yeah. that is working in us, that is living inside of us, yeah. out of that love and appreciation for that, you give it just like you've been given it, you received it, unconditionally, you begin to give it unconditionally. We didn't do that at first yeah. because we didn't have an understanding. We were going to church for church. We was experiencing religion. We had to break all down, you know, and have our relationship going to hell in a handbag before we started to pursue a relationship with God. But in having a relationship with God, communing with him and seeking with him, seeking him, he showed us 
how to be loved, how to receive love, and then how to give it. Once you do that, everything is better. Everything. Sex is better. Yes, Lord. The relationship <laughs> is so much better. Communication Friendship. is better. Friendship is better. What we do together in our business as we raise our kids, everything is better. Did I say yeah. sex was better? Listen, okay, otherworldly. Do you okay. understand what I'm saying? If the Lord <laughs> created anything better than sex, he left it up there beyond the pearly gates. But I want to thank God that he sent that down here to us. He just gave that as a gift to us. So our gift that we should give back to God is unconditional love to our spouses. No, it's not easy, but you ain't easy to love, but God still does it. And so we have to use that same love and understanding and compassion that we've been given and we got to give it away. That's what singleness is all about. Yeah. First, the relationship with God being completely whole, then bringing that wholeness to the union and the union becoming whole because of God's love. That's right. And that's how the two becomes one a whole lot better. <laughs> May the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow forever be yours. We will see you for another episode of 10 Minutes with Teddy and Tina. In, in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.